In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to save data in your Ionic 2 applications using Ionic 2 storage service. So first I'm going to show you how to get it set up in your application. I'm going to talk through why we need it, what it does, and finally we're also going to go through how to actually use it as well. So I'm going to start off by generating a new Ionic 2 application. Uh, so we're just going to run Ionic start, uh, we'll call this one Ionic 2 save data use the blank template and the v2 flag so we'll just let that generate okay so that's done generating now I'm just gonna change into it and we're going to serve it okay so that's all ready to go now and I've already got the code open up in my editor here and uh, so now we're gonna set up the storage service and so the storage is uh, it's kind of a, a separate service to most of the other components and APIs we have in Ionic uh, but it is installed by default in applications now. You can see here in the documentation that they have the install command, uh, but this is already in there by default, so we don't need to worry about that. So to allow us to use this storage service, we have to come into our uh, app.module.ts file here, and we're gonna have to import it and set it up as a provider. So all we need to do is uh, import storage, from Ionic storage and then we can just add it to the providers array down here and that's all we need to do everything's set up now so what the storage class will allow us to do is uh, store some data and retrieve some data so it provides uh, two main methods we have a set and get uh, so I'll just open up the documentation here and we can take a look at an example so you can see storage is being used here and we have storage.set so we're setting the name as max and then we have storage.get and we're getting that name value that was set previously and then this will return that. So this is a simple key value system here. We store some data on a key and then we retrieve it using that key. So there's some pretty smart stuff going on behind the scenes with the storage service. So uh, when we're working with storage and mobile applications, generally we either are going to be storing data in the browser's uh, local storage or we'll use a native uh, SQLite database. So there's a few different flavors of local storage stuff that's stored in the browser itself. Um, but the problem with that is that it isn't uh, necessarily stable and it has a memory limit. So. Uh, browser storage is limited to uh, 5 megabytes and it can be cleaned up by the operating system so if the operating system is trying to free up some space on a device it might just wipe that storage completely uh, so if you're storing data uh, in your application that you want to be there permanently uh, at any point in time it could just disappear uh, now this doesn't happen very often uh, but it does happen and so if you need your data to be permanent then it's not really an option uh, the SQLite database on the other hand is a native database uh, so it's outside of the browser so this means when the operating system is trying to clean up some memory and stuff and it's trying to uh, delete the browser's local storage which it sees as junk your data is not going to be deleted if it's in a native database because SQLite is native, it's a native database, uh, it's not available in the browser, uh, so instead you need to use a, a plugin to access that, which we can do. And so the whole point of the storage service that Ionic 2 provides is that it's just going to automatically use uh, the best uh, storage that is available. So if you're running your application without that SQLite plugin installed, it's going to fall back to browser-based storage. If you do have the SQLite plugin installed, you have access to that native database, then it's going to use that instead. So no matter how your application is set up, we can just use this simple API here, of set and get, to set and retrieve those values. If you do want to use the SQLite database, uh, which again I recommend if you want your data to be permanent, if the data you're storing is temporary, it doesn't really matter, then you probably don't need to worry about it, but if it's data you want to stick around, you just have to make sure to run this command here. And once that's installed, the storage service will know to use that SQLite database. So we'll just run through a really quick example here with the application we generated. So we've already set up the storage service. Now we're just going to go to the home page here. 
and we're going to have to import that storage service here as well. And we're going to have to inject it into our constructor. So what I'm going to do is create two functions. Uh, I'm going to do a set data function and a get data function. And we're going to link these up to some buttons that we're going to use to set some data and then retrieve it. So we'll set those up in our template now. So we'll just come in here and create a button. And we'll link that up to uh, the functions we just created. So this one can be the set data. And I'll just copy that button and we'll make this one our get data button. So if I just add some console.log statements here, we'll check that everything is hooked up and working correctly. Save that, we'll take a look in the browser now. And uh, if you look over in the console here, you can actually see what Ionic Storage is doing. So uh, it's using uh, the web SQL storage because uh, that's the best storage that uh, it could find. So that's the one it's using. Uh, again, that's all handled on uh, sort of in the backend stuff with storage itself. You don't need to worry about what it's using. Now, web SQL is like SQLite, uh, but it is still browser-based storage. So you still have that problem of um, the data being cleared. And the SQLite plugin, uh, so for storage to use the SQLite native database, uh, the application will need to be running on a real device uh, that won't work through the browser. Okay, so if we click on set data here, we can see we're logging out set data. If we click get data, it says get data. So that's all hooked up correctly. Uh, so now we can use the storage service to save some data and retrieve that. So first we're going to set the data in here. So we're going to say um, this dot storage dot set and we're going to set this on the we'll just call it my data key and then the value we're going to set is just hello and if I come in here and we'll use the get function instead say get my data and this is asynchronous here so we're going to pass in a handler and we'll just log out that data once it's retrieved Okay, so if I save that now, we'll jump back into the browser again. Oops, I've done something wrong. Uh, what did I do? I've actually formatted the get call completely wrong here. Uh, it returns a promise, so uh, what we actually need to do is get my data, then we can create that handler. So we'll log that out again, try again, hopefully it works. Okay, so we click set data, so that data should be set now. Click get data, and it says hello. Uh, so if I was to then change this to, uh, we'll just say goodbye now. So if I save that, it's going to refresh now. So if I click get data first now, uh, it should still log out hello, and it does, because that's the uh, value that was stored, and we haven't yet set that new value of uh, goodbye because we haven't clicked on set data yet. So if I click on set data now and then click it and now it says goodbye. So I can refresh this uh, application completely, click get data and that value is still there. Uh, so usually once you refresh the application all of your variables are gone, you lose all your data but if we're using the storage service here we can store that in a permanent location uh, or semi-permanent at least and we can retrieve that data again later. So this is obviously just a very simple method for storing data. There are other options available. Uh, you can use things like PouchDB, uh, which is a no SQL document based uh, storage, uh, which is local as well. So again, it runs into that same problem of being able to be wiped. But then PouchDB also has some connectors where you can even sync it to a remote server. You have the data on the cloud somewhere and you can sync back and forth between a remote data set and your local data. 
You could, of course, just store your data directly on a server instead and have some API to pull in the data uh, to your application. Uh, there is uh, a more advanced way to use the SQLite uh, native plugin. So uh, this storage service just uses it as a simple uh, key value system, but SQLite itself is uh, essentially a fully fledged SQL based database. Uh, so you can do things like create tables and run queries and stuff like that. Uh, so if you'd like, you can also do that uh, within your applications here. You can run uh, queries directly from the JavaScript. So if you have more complicated data requirements, a simple key value system might not be enough for you, but uh, for simple data storage requirements, if you just want to store uh, some arrays of data, some simple usernames or values like that, uh, the storage system is really good. Um, it's a simple way to use the best storage that's available with just a single uh, API. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.